Good morning, everybody, and welcome to worship today. Now, it is January 2021, and these are not the best of days, and we are naturally concerned about the corona and uh, perhaps friends and neighbours who are in, in not the best way of going at the moment. So, we're coming to God and we're seeking His uh, encouragement, His reassurance. And it's good to know that we can do so. We're beginning with some verses from Psalm 5, where the psalmist is feeling quite vulnerable, quite under threat. But he is comforted as he comes into God's presence and prays. Let's hear some words from Psalm number 5. Listen to my words, O Lord, and hear my sighs. Listen to my cry for help, my God and King. I pray to you, O Lord, you hear my voice in the morning. At sunrise I offer my prayer and wait for your answer. You are not a God who is pleased with wrongdoing. You allow no evil in your presence. You cannot stand the sight of proud men. You hate all wicked people. You destroy all liars and despise violent, deceitful men. But because of your great love, I can come into your house. I can worship in your holy temple and bow down to you in reverence. Lord, I have so many enemies. Lead me to do your will. Make your way plain for me to follow. Verse 11. All who find safety in you will rejoice. They can always sing for joy. Protect those who love you. Because of you they are truly happy and blessed. You bless those who obey you, Lord. Your love protects them like a shield. Amen. May God bless his word to us just now. And let's pray. Almighty God, our Father in heaven, like the Psalms, we just now are feeling under threat, perhaps not from other people, but from this global pandemic. Dear Lord, the times are, are very uncertain and really quite frightening. But we are so glad and so thankful that we may come to you and that we might take refuge in you and find this assurance from your word that you will help and protect and guide and comfort all those who turn to you in reverence and in faith. O oh Lord, we hear others who perhaps are scoffing, who are contemptuous, who say there is no God, or if there is, that you don't care. We don't want to be like that. We pray, dear Lord, that by your Spirit you would help us to trust, that you would help us to obey. And that you would reassure us in our hearts, just as you did David the Psalmist, that we are your people and that we are in your care and that you will look after us. So dear Lord, forgive us our sins and assure us of your love and comfort today as we pray to you in Jesus' name. Who taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Now let's turn back to the Bible. We're going to read from the New Testament the letter of the Apostle Paul to the Christians in Rome. So it's a first century letter from the Apostle to Romans and we're back in chapter 8. And if you remember I said last week this is really a golden chapter of the Bible. It's one that's so rewarding every time we turn to it and read it and study it. Romans 8, last week we were reading the first number of verses where it declared that there's no condemnation for those who trust in Jesus. Our sins are forgiven, they're no longer counted 
against us. And the Holy Spirit lives in us, helping us to do what is right and staying clear from what is wrong. We're going to read on the, the next bit today, <clears throat> and we're starting at verse 12. Verse 12. Romans 8. So then, my brothers, we have an obligation, but it is not to live as our human nature wants us to, for if you live according to your human nature, you're going to die. But if by the Spirit you put to death your sinful actions, you will live. Those who are led by God's Spirit are God's sons. For the Spirit that God has given you does not make you slaves and cause you to be afraid. Instead, the Spirit makes you God's children. And by the Spirit's power, we cry out to God, Father, my Father. God's Spirit joins himself to our spirits to declare that we are God's children. Since we are his children, we will possess the blessings he keeps for his people. And we will also possess with Christ what God has kept for him. For if we share Christ's suffering, we will also share his glory. Amen. And may God bless his word to us just now. Frank Sinatra had a big hit in 1969 with the song, My Way. Apparently it's one of the most popular songs played at funerals now in certain parts of the world. It remains a, a popular anthem of individuality. Another song I really liked when I was a teenager was Billy Joel's My Life, which has this line. I don't care what you say anymore. This is my life. Go ahead with your own life and leave me alone. And I confess... I used to play it really loud and hope my parents were listening. Well, perhaps more recently, you might have seen that movie with Hugh Jackman, The Greatest Showman. And at one point in the movie, uh, a group of colourful characters led by a bearded lady sing in defiance, I am who I'm meant to be. This is me. And these are just a few examples of a culture that increasingly values, indeed idolizes, individual identity. And the message we seem to be hearing time and again is something like this. Discover who you really are and celebrate it. Whatever team you support, whatever politics you vote for, whatever your tastes in music or fashion or sex, be yourself. Don't apologize. However, what if I try and do this? What if I search for the hero inside myself and find a coward? What if I discover who I really am and don't like what I find? What if I assess my life and decide that my life is not worth living? Could it be that all this obsession with ourselves is actually a part of why so many people in the world today are depressed and even suicidal? Well, what if we could discover another identity that wasn't dependent on our earthly circumstances or talents or best efforts? What if we could be given an identity far greater than any we could imagine or achieve for ourselves? What a relief of pressure it would be to discover that we could be recognised and valued not because of our rather imperfect merits, but 
because of the wisdom, grace, and love and generosity of someone else. Now, I don't mind if people uh, speak of me as a Northern Irish Presbyterian Church minister. It's okay. I'm very happy to be identified as John and Dorothy's son, Stephen's brother, Hazel's husband, Mike, Josh, Sarah and Emily's dad. I like that. And I admit I feel really quite chuffed if someone refers to me as a musician or a writer. All of these are the kind of authentic bits that make up a unique individual. But there is something much more fundamental. I am not the latest mutation of a random process of evolution. I am the result of God's specific design and creation made in his image to please and glorify him. So are you. So is every member of the human race. And there's more. As a Christian, more than anything else, I want to be identified as a child of God and a follower of the Lord Jesus. Yes, I want to be identified with Jesus, the Son of God, the Saviour of the world, the one who is the winner over evil and malice, the winner over human corruption, the winner over prejudice and injustice and even death itself. I want to be identified with the one who preached the need for repentance and yet fed a multitude of sinners. The one who cleared the temple of crooks and welcomed in shepherds and fishermen and women and little children. The one who healed lepers and forgave his executioners. Who rose victorious from the grave and is preparing a comeback in glory to make all things new in everlasting life. I want to be a child of God. And by his grace in Christ, I can. Paul writes here in Romans chapter 8, Those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. You did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave again to fear, but you received the spirit of sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. And the good news here is that this is so much more than what I feel or desire. I might have a mixture of feelings, and some of those feelings could be quite conflicting or confusing. But God the Spirit is at work leading me in a very clear direction of obedience to God as a disciple of Jesus. And as I trust, as I follow, he assures me of the identity God gives me. The Almighty Creator and Lord of heaven and earth owns me as his dear child. No longer under condemnation, assured of his love and delight and kind provision. I'm encouraged to pray with gratitude. Abba, Papa, Father, my Almighty Heavenly Father, dear Father, hallowed. Be your name. Isn't this good? You can be a better you. I can be a better me when we realize by the Holy Spirit that as followers of Jesus, we are now children of God. Here in Romans chapter 8, against a backdrop of a, a very cruel and harsh first century, all kinds of hardship, persecution, the Apostle Paul is encouraging his Christian readers to be confident in their Lord. The same Holy Spirit who brought us to initial repentance and saving faith and new birth 
will stay and live within us and help us grow in faith and practice and live as brothers and sisters of Christ. The spirit of sonship enables us to think and relate and behave in a Christ-like way. We're still us, but a better us as the Spirit of Christ lives and, and moves and works in us. Now, of course, this is challenging. It runs very counter to the culture of the world we inhabit every day. It might at times make us unpopular with people we know. We may suffer some of the same kind of opposition Jesus himself faced. We will have to stand firm, holding to the standards and the promises of the Bible. We have to pray for wisdom and courage and support one another in fellowship. But with this challenge comes this most unique comfort. The promise of a future inheritance, a place in the resurrection with our Master, an eternity secure in the Father's generous love, and the promise of His Spirit's presence and help in the here and now, whatever our circumstances. What a friend we have in Jesus, we sometimes say, all our sins and griefs to bear. Jesus bore our sins and our griefs on the cross. And that means sin no longer has control over us, neither do fear or worry or even grief. Now, of course, we have griefs, we have some sorrows in this life. No one gets away without some sorrow. We have our normal concerns about life. But Christians are no longer enslaved or, 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 or crushed by such things. For the Spirit is encouraging us to be confident in our faith. He is encouraging us that even in the midst of a month of global pandemic, we are still Jesus' family. Almighty God, his Father and now ours, will look after us and strengthen us for every difficulty and sorrow until he brings us home to share his glory. Now this is actually tremendously liberating. We don't have to compete in the rat race for material wealth anymore. We don't have to succumb to the, the image of the world. We don't have to wander bewildered in this heaving whirlpool of worldly culture, trying to figure out who we are and why we're here and what it's all about. Followers of Jesus have been reconciled to our maker and gifted with a heavenly ID. We are God's dear children, and as such we now live to know him and please him. We delight in this relationship which gives us purpose and direction. We seek to find and play our part in his plan. Whatever else is dear to us, in the short term. Above all, we look for the coming of his kingdom and we pledge ourselves to his cause. To him be the honour and the glory and the praise. Amen. Let's pray together. O oh God, our Father, we confess that at times we have lived as if life was all about us. We have lived as if the world just revolved around us. We were completely self-centered, taken up with ourselves and our, our feelings and our desires. And sometimes that seemed to make us happy, but more often perhaps it, it made us sad and frustrated. Thank you that we don't have to be limited 
by ourselves. Thank you that in Christ you invite us to something so much greater. You give us this identification as your children and that just opens the horizon infinitely. So we pray that you would help us to, to realise today what you're calling us to be, what you make us by your Spirit and help us to, to realise the fullness of that and to to explore this new promised land that you opened before us. Help us, dear Lord, to reverently and gratefully and enthusiastically explore and serve to your honour and your glory. Dear Lord, hear these and all our prayers, remembering particularly just now our hospitals, our doctors, our nurses, and all our healthcare uh, people. Dear Lord, give strength and stamina. Dear Lord, help us in, in these times and in every time. And may you have the thanks and the praise and the glory. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore.